knowledge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to Nightwise.com, the one and only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. My name's Nightwise, and I'll be your host on this episode of the Nightwise.com podcast, Season 14, Episode 2, Finding Your Focus. For more information and the show notes, head on over to the website, www.nightwise.com, that's K-N-I-G-H-T-W-I-S-E.com, to find out all that we talk about, and of course, uh, to find the Nightwise.com media feed. Subscribe to that feed and get all of the Nightwise.com content delivered to your podcatcher automatically. Hey guys and girls, uh, welcome back to the Nightwise.com podcast. Been a couple of months, actually, uh, since I last did a show, but decided to, you know, let's do a show. So instead of, you know, talking about how busy life is, let's get just down to it. I have been swamped. Swamped in distractions and pings and doodahs, and I have been frustrated lately that I didn't get down to, you know, just sitting down and being creative and doing a podcast like this. So I decided to do something about it. I've been tweaking around with my systems and decided to write up a blog post about it. And that blog post was actually quite good material to start off this little mini-series of the Nightwise.com podcast that's all about finding focus in a very distraction-intense world. So today is going to be a story time episode where I have, uh, you know, actually written up a blog and I'll read it to you. You could just sit back, relax, close your eyes and not when you're driving and uh, no, you know, just enjoy. See you guys. You're listening to the Nightwise.com podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. So, this is it. I finally come to my senses and decided to plug out of the firehose we call the internet. These days it's been increasingly hard for me to find a way to unplug from the online world, if you can still do that, in favor of sitting down and getting some stuff done. Take writing for one. I've been having the hardest time getting a blog post or anything creative that matter out on the internet over the last couple of months. The culprit here is the internet. Gone are the days when I yearned for a connection to the online world. These days I'm just happy to have a few moments of peace and live without an IP for a while. If you think being a geek puts you at risk of this connection overdrive, well, try running your own business. Aside from being besieged by the distractions of the net, lolcats being a major threat, you also get to deal with uh, clients and suppliers that want to get in touch with you 24-7. It's a bitch. You don't get to unplug anymore. I'm looking forward to a weekend at the seaside with the family, and I'm seriously considering what my options are. Leaving my phone at home is not really an option anymore. Aside from pulling the plug on a lot of distracting incoming hails, I also lose my podcast player, my music streamer, my ebook reader, and what have you. There's so much I stream these days that cutting the pipe just won't cut it. The question that I'm pondering is, is there a middle ground? Is there a way for me to still be online without getting carpet bombed by notifications or tempted to look at the face of the online Medusa only to have my productivity turn to stone? The answer might be old technology. In my never-ending quest to get some retro gear up and running again, I've come across an interesting piece of information. The modern-day internet and all its distractions have an incredible hard time running on old technology. Case in point, the 9-plus-year-old Dell Latitude D531 laptop. I'm currently working on it. I pulled it from a dumpster down at the recycling center, it's kind of my thing, and installed the very simple version of Helium Linux on it. It's slow as hell, and opening a website takes me back to the dial-up days, just without the modem sounds. But the upside here is, it takes actual effort to open up the browser and surf 9GAG or Facebook and stuff. The loading time is long and the experience is abysmal. 
The result is that it's a lot less tempting to browse off when I'm doing something. When I get, once I get past the initial urge to flaunter off, I stick to my guns and continue what I'm doing. Like, for example, writing this article. The distractions of the net are a major problem these days. It's not the information overload that's the issue, it's the quality of the information. While we could, if we wanted to, read papers on nuclear fusion on our smartphone while stuck in traffic, we spend hours on consuming crap. 9gag, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, while most of these networks have the ability to connect us as a species, they are mostly filled with crap content. Ads, hate speech, people bitching and moaning about their first world problems, and the networks, if we can still call them that because nobody calls TV networks the networks anymore, are, you know, just want you to come back for more, waste more time, and get less done. I'm not reminded often of the feats in my past, but more and more I keep looking back at one of the podcast episodes I did a couple of years ago, must be over 10 years now, about cultivating the library of your mind. About how it's important to curate and filter the information you consume over time, since the former is an unlimited source and the latter is not. To ensure your personal development as a geek or as a person, you have to control the content you consume. And that leads me to my next thought. We bitch and moan about the fact that social networks are running off with our personal information and are compiling an ever more specific profile on our personality by aggregation of big data. But how about the time they're stealing? If you spend one hour a day on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and whatnot, how many hours of your life is lost to those companies? So what to do? I think the first and foremost question is to become aware. Becoming aware of the distractions that keep you from being productive, from the information, true, false, biased or not, that you consume and how it affects your mood, your view of life and most importantly, your time. Next to consider, what information and communications do I actually need? The call from my wife is surely more important than another LinkedIn update from a contact who is working on his boring job for 300 years then it's a matter of not only hurting your distractions, please turn off your smartphone, it's bossing you around, but also managing your urges to be distracted. There are quite simple site blockers for all browser platforms that can redirect you to Wikipedia when you type in BuzzFeed and so forth. Try something like that. I'm doing, or try something like what I'm doing right now, using a system that is just too slow and too sluggish to handle the net. Whatever works for you. Personally, I think this topic deserves more than just one episode of the podcast, and it might be a good idea to start a series on this. It's also, for me, a work in progress. To continue the fight to serve the Nightwise.com primary mission, letting technology work for you. So stay, stay safe out there, stay sane, and stay focused. See you next time.